Welcome to OAuth authentication using device code flow. Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, in just a few days, um, we will uh, say goodbye to basic authentication with uh, with Business Central. So, if you need to connect to web services, you need to connect to OData, to SOAP, uh, then you have to use OAuth authentication. Uh, and um, there are many different styles and, and methods for, for actually doing OAuth. Uh, there is another video on the channel describing site-to-site -site or service-to-service -service, uh, OAuth authentication where you are logging in as an app, not really as a user. Uh, but in this video, I want to show you a way that you can log in as a user uh, to OAuth. But without hitting that nasty callback that sometimes really complicates OAuth. So if you are in a environment where you might have, you know, uh, restricted um, access to be able to do anything, then this might be a good way of doing it. But what is device? code flow you might ask uh, and and let me actually just demo it and then we can we can take a look at on um, how to actually do that so here is visual studio and some c sharp code and we'll get back to it i'll just run this program that's on the screen well maybe if i and it's actually just a console program so it starts here and and you can see now we're getting a message so sign in use a web browser to open the page Microsoft.com slash device login and enter the code. So you might have seen this in, uh, in Visual Studio Code if you connect to a uh, Cloud Sandbox. Uh, so I use that. I click on the link here. We get a browser open. I enter the code. I think I'll use Hogarth.com. Here we go. Are you trying to sign into YouTube PC demo? I think I am, uh, but let's actually see what, is, before I do this, let's just see what's happening here on the other side of the screen. So right now it says waiting, and I think it's slowly counting down. Um, so I will hit continue here, you assign in, and uh, I guess now just the, the second after I sign in, we got a token, so we got the uh, the bearer token, the access token, and uh, and we are now ready to do regular uh, web service communication with BC because we have a token. Um, so let let's talk about this for a second, and and let's talk about device code flow, and that actually starts in the Azure portal. So let me go in here. And uh, let me not do this. Maybe let me do this one actually. Yeah. I will find my YouTube BC demo here. Uh, so I created an app registration in here called YouTube BC demo. Uh, that just had a application ID. I assigned permissions for for Business Central. I did not create any secrets. I did not, sorry, well, let's go back to the front page. I did not create any redirects here. So I created an app registration and added API permissions. I did one more thing. Under authentication, down here at the bottom, on the advanced settings, I activated allow public client flows. And this one includes the no keyboard device code flow option, which is the one that, that we're using here. So this enabled us to create the scenario I just showed you. Um, but let's actually get, get into the code. And, and I kind of, because there's there's actually some code. So in, in order for, for this not to be a, uh, Eric is just typing, typing, typing video, 
I did the code before the video, so I'll, I'll walk you through it. So the uh, basically the and this is why I just did it in the same project that I did the uh, the side to side stuff in. Um, so we call ask for device code. We have a function there, and uh, and this one starts by creating and. So, so what I did here, you know, the, even though this is very business central centric, this is actually not business central centric at all. This basically uh, works for for any Microsoft service, as long as you eventually need to get a Microsoft login to something. Um, and I am not using any magic, any libraries, anything. This is as raw as it, as it gets. There are. DLLs and Nugget packets that do all this for you. Uh, and I think you should actually not use my code. You should use those things. Uh, but I think my code is better at actually explaining how this works. Um, so the first thing we do is that we send a request to login.microsoftonline.com slash common in this case we can just use common as the tenant id because depending on who you log in that will be the tenant uh, so common slash or two slash v2 dot zero slash device code and then we're actually posting something to that and we're posting the client id from uh, from our app registration 38 ff that is hopefully the one that we just looked at. Yes, 38FF. And we add a scope here. So the what we want a, a token for, the scope that we need the token for is api.businesscentral.dynamics.com slash user impersonation. And again, just specifying the tenant as common. Um, so we post this through a uh, HTTP web request, and then we get the response. And and actually, let's let's you know what let let's fire up the old debugger and see how this goes. So um, somewhere here is is our output. We don't care about that yet. So we're in the debugger and uh, we're sending this off to Microsoft. We get an HTTP OK back. We open the stream, so we so we get whatever data is there. We read that, we read that to the end. So we now we have a response from server, so we can take a look at that. Uh, and I can actually open the. Uh, if you haven't tried this one, that that there's a very cool Windows 10 program called Dev Toys, and uh, Dev Toys can do a lot of stuff. Um, but it can also format JSON nicely. So we, we get this thing back. We get a user code. Then we get a device code uh, that we need to supply later on, a verification UI, how long till it expires, and an interval for how often you should see if there's something there. And then the message to sign in, user, blah, blah, blah. So. Basically, what we need to, at this point, worry about is the message. Um, so, so here we will pass the JSON into a JSON object, and if the result, if this contains device code, so if we get a device code, then I know it's a proper thing. Um, so I will write the message so this uh what the what did I just do the the message that's here i would put that onto the screen so control the right line so i write the message here uh it's now on the page and then we call the second function so the function down here is wait for device code so let's actually call that and now we're down here um and you can see the first thing that's happened is that we kind of go into a a while loop here so while waiting um and we start by sleeping 
five seconds. We could have read that out of the uh, uh, out of this one. If we really wanted to be proper, then we would figure out how much we should wait. Um, and I've decided to just you know wait uh, five hundred seconds plus processing time. And now I think I now there we go. So we're counting down, and then at some point here, we built a new HTTP web request. So we call login.microsoft.online.com slash tenant slash OAuth2 token. But what we actually post is, in this case, uh, you can see is a tenant is just common, but uh, here I, uh, I still have it as a variable. So tenant equal common and grant type equal what is param of grant type device code. That's very, I don't know. Uh, we specify the client ID. We specify the scope again, user pers personalization and device code. And then see, we're passing the device code. So the device code we got, so this guy that we got from our initial call that gave us this thing. We pass that in and say, hey, if the, there's a user that log is logging in on this device code, then that's the one that we want. Um, so we do this and then we send that off to the races and we get a response. In this case, we get a response saying the remote server returned a 400 batch request. Um, so we know that if we get a protocol error here, which is normal, and that's kind of weird, that it's, hey, nothing has happened on this one, that's a 400. Then we will uh, say waiting on the screen. And now it's 90, 99 beers to go here. Um, and, and you know, that, if I go back here, that will just continue um until you see until we go down and this and we get to the we're not just getting 400 so let's do the following let's put a breakpoint up here and i will just ask this one to continue so now it's let me make this a tad bigger you can see that it's just waiting now so we'll do the login again I paste this I go to this page Hang on, I go to that page I am on that page there we are I log in I am trying to log in I am logged in and hopefully there we go now we have the breakpoint here because now it's not a 400. So we can see that we got an okay. So now we are reading the data out of that one. Reading again, get response. Let's take a look at this guy. Um, we can put that in here instead. So now we get a bearer token, which is what we need. We've got a scope for use and presentation from Business Central. We have an expiry, and for some reason, this actually expires in more than the typical 3,599 seconds. Um, so I guess that's good, but most important, we get the access token that we need. And then the last last bits here is that we go we is there a token type and if the token type is bearer then we we're happy and we put that on the screen right now because we don't know where else to put it and we return and everybody are happy. Uh, let's see. Are we still in the debugger? Do I need to hit enter? I need to hit enter. There we go. So 
that is the device code flow. Um, I use it in, you know, let me actually show you a place where I do use this. Uh, in uh, in the object designer where I need to download symbols of, uh, of Business Central. So I need to, from Business Central, contact Business Central to be able to download symbols. Um, so I need to authenticate uh, with with the back end and um, come on, sample, what about, wow, simple object designer. It actually says now, hey, your symbols are not up to date. So you see here to open, to sign in, use the web browser. So I copy the code here. I go to the device login. I copy the code. I log in. I'm trying to log in to developer. I am. And now this one starts downloading simple system application and, and so on. So, and, and that's the only way I can authenticate from within BC to BC in this case, because, uh, well, we could go through the, uh, uh, the, um, the OAuth landing page, but, um, there were some other complications that prevented me from doing this in that case. Um, so that that's an example of, of device code. Uh, and if, if you're in situations where you can't really handle the, the redirect in, in a meaningful way, uh, it, it's, it's actually working pretty well. Um, so, and that, then the process is, well, you have to be able to implement a, a wait mechanism that waits for, for reply. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of the same, uh, same style as the one we did on, on, on the side to side stuff. So that's device code flow. Uh, and if the, uh, you know, if, <laughs> if the YouTube algorithm works, then you should actually be, uh, offer the, the other OAuth, uh, video right here. If that's not the OAuth video I'm pointing in, there's probably another good one. So go watch that one and, uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.